Welcome to Bandit's Keep Actual Play. I'm Daniel. Today we are continuing the battle between the two goblin factions in my original Dungeons & Dragons campaign. This is kind of the war game part of the campaign where a mercenary group had gone out and defeated a goblin horde, but now that horde is fighting to see who is going to be the new leader and if they plan on taking revenge against that mercenary company. All right, we have another pretty important initiative here because, again, if the wolves win, that one that has the two guys on the two sides of them is going to be able to get out of there. If they don't win, then he's going to be stuck in a melee that he does not want to be in. So, wolves fail. Oh, no. Okay. Okay, so, of course, the other side's going to choose to move first. These guys turn. And they're being flanked. That being said, they can't move. So, they're not going to move. And... No move equals exhaustion goes away. Is that right? It does say not moving. I feel like I went through this before. You know, but they're in the middle. Of, well, they're not They're not in MLA right this second. So they did not move. Yeah. No, I'm going to say that they're... Somebody can tell me what they think. Because again, not moving removes exhaustion. But at the same time, they're going to be in MLA at the end of this turn. So I suppose that makes sense. Okay, so they turn sideways. Everybody's exhausted. They're in MLA. Uh, this guy is going to move forward. His regular movement. Actually, you know what? He's not going to. He thinks they'll be able to take them out. He's going to stay here and get get his exhaustion back. That makes sense. This guy can't charge them. Oh, it doesn't matter. This guy's back here. They're also just going to stay put because they need to get their exhaustion away. These guys also don't think they can really do much right this second with this guy. So they're also going to stay put. So the only people moving were those ones that turned. Now we switch back to the to the wolves. He's going to make a right face. And I think he can still... Is he close enough to... Oh, I don't think he can turn like that and then charge. Damn it. All right, he's still going to... He's facing them. Is it worth it? Nope, he's going to stay where he is. Because I think he's close enough to charge next turn. He is. He's going to hope for a win on the initiative next turn so he can charge. Because if he can charge and take him out, that'll be the end of it, right? So, this guy is also just going to stay where he is because, again, he's exhausted. It makes sense to stay. So, we just have one melee. This is, <laughs> this is less than ideal for the wolf pack over here. They're probably going to go down, but we'll see. So, these guys are exhausted, which knocks them down one rank. But because they're attacking from the flank, it brings them up one rank. So, they're basically going to attack as heavy foot like they normally would. The horse, on the other hand, is also exhausted, so they're going to defend as armored foot. So heavy foot versus armored foot, one die per two men, six kills. So we've got, again, the ranks are five, so we're going to go two from these guys and two from these guys. No kills, no kills. Okay. They can fight back. They're five ranks deep still. So they actually can fight back as Armored Foot versus Light, because these guys are... Remember, they're Armored Foot because they're one lower. These guys are one lower, but because... Oh, you don't defend as anything higher. So they're going to attack as Armored Foot with a plus one to their die. Armored Foot against Light Foot. One die per man, four to six. So they're going to get... First, these five are going to attack. Neither one of these guys made any kills, so that's good for for, the, for me to keep track of. Okay, basically, three through six is a kill. Wow, that's five kills. That's fantastic for them. Okay, five kills against two. And just because the math is easier for me right now, I'm going, well, actually, I can do it this way. Same thing on the other side. Not, not as good. Three kills. Three kills against three. All right. So neither one of those is enough to cause the standard mole uh, morale check. So we have to do post Malay morale. So let's jump over here. This group here, Goblin A2, has not lost anyone. So there's 25 of them. 
Now it does say that when you're exhausted, this, uh, there is an issue with your morale as well. So let's just check this because everybody's exhausted. So I might just call it a wash, but morale value. Oh, they defend. Okay. Oh, okay. It drops one value on rolls. Okay. Well, there's not really a roll here. That would only be if you did the other morale. So let's just look at it and go, you know what? It's a wash. Everybody's exhausted. Let's do our regular algebra here. <laughs> and do our post malay So, these guys first. They lost five, the, the wolves lost none. So a d6 times five, 10. So the wolves have 10. Now also, they have five more people. So they got plus five, and then they're gonna have a plus 25 times 6, which is 150. Okay, they, they are, they lost 5, so they're 20 times 5, which is 100, so a difference of 50. 40 to 59, back one move in good order. Okay, so they've got to move back one full move in good order. So that means they'll be facing the enemy, okay? Oh, hold on, no, that's right, this is it right here. Okay, these guys... Okay, on the other side, they only lost three. So the difference here now is, again, a d6 die, roll four times three, so it's actually a little higher, 12. Oh, that's funny. Plus three, it actually equals the same thing. So it's 150. And now, but their number's slightly higher. Their number is uh, 22. So instead of being 100, it's going to be 110. So the difference is 40, which is exactly the same thing. Uh, one move in good order. They actually can't move back a full move because the water hits them. And the way water works, it just makes you... They actually can't move through that water. So I'm just going to stop them there. So that's them. They've moved. Everybody's good. Okay. And the Malays are over, and that's the end of that turn. Okay, interesting. All right, let's see what happens next turn. That one group of horses needs to get the heck out of there. Actually, you can't charge them because they're on a hill. Forgot about that. Okay, next round. Okay, the footmen go first. All right, well, they want to stop anybody attacking their leader. So these guys, even though they're exhausted, are going to do the exact same thing. They're going to move back because they move back one thing. So they move back. Everybody here is still exhausted. That's going to be the same melee as before. This guy... Oh, no, they, move, they all move first. Oh, and now this guy's fully charged. He's going to move up. And he's not exhausted. So that's bad for them. These guys are also recharging now. They're kind of facing the wrong way for anything but to go after these guys. So they're going to do an oblique turn. And then they get to move four and a half centimeters forward, which is what they're going to do, which is cool. These guys are actually going to... Huh. They can't really... You know what? They're going to... Well, that takes a full move to do that. They're just going to turn. Just figuring that they're going to get charged by one or the other. These guys are going to move their full movement forward, wanting to bring themselves into position so they can actually block him eventually. And that's the end of their turn. And the king hasn't moved. He might be smarter this time than the other, the old goblin king and run if they get too close to him. But being on the hill is pretty is good. Can he get... Actually, no, he's going to move. Ooh, no. Yeah, these guys are weakened. Ooh, he's the one, no, he'll stay where he is for now. All right, let's see. We'll do one move at a time to see what happens. These guys are definitely going to charge one of these two groups. I think they're going to charge these guys. Actually, if they charge them, they can get them from the flank because you don't have to charge in a directly straight. You can kind of come in a bit of a 45, so they're going to come and hit them in the flank. They know that's going to screw them up to get hit. No, you know, they're not going to do that. Why would they want to get charged themselves? They are smart. 
they're going to charge directly. At, no matter what, they're going to hit in the flank next turn if they don't get this charge, but they're going to hope for the best. They're charging. These guys have to make a 7 or better on 2d6 to hold for the charge. And they got it. Okay. Charges forward. And melee will ensue. They couldn't do anything at a uh, at an angle, so cool. These guys, can they get to a place where they can help? They make an oblique turn. Oh yeah, they can. They're gonna charge in and actually attack this guy. They can't get him from the back because there's no way they get over there, but they'll come in and you know hit him there. These guys are facing that way. They don't have to be worried about that. All right, so we got a lot of little weird malaise going on here. So let's do the first malay first. Did I do everybody's movement? Hold on, let me mark some. I need to get one of those like dry erase markers to do this so I'm not wasting so many pieces of paper every time. Everybody that moved has it except for them. Did they move? Yeah, they moved. They're exhausted. Okay. So let's do this malay first. We've got, again, light horse against heavy foot. Light horse versus heavy foot is two dice per man, six kills. It's great how the uh, exhaustion rules and stuff really play out and change the numbers significantly. So any sixes here are kills. One kill. Okay. Then we've got five heavy foot attacking light horse. One die per two minutes, so they get two dice, any sixes or kills. Wow, these foot goblins are damn good. <laughs> so we got one kill on each side, which basically is a wash. All of the math is a wash. Basically, they both started with 25. They both lost one, so there's no die to be rolled. There's no difference, so it's literally just the, the straight-up numbers. Five versus six, it's not going to be... So 24 is the difference. I don't think that's enough to change anything, but I could be wrong about that. No, 20 to 39. Move back half move in good order. So actually, in a way, that's good. They move them back half a move. So they can break off from the melee next time if they win initiative and they want to. Cool. Because uh, otherwise they would have been stuck if this guy could have... You know, they're gonna, hopefully they can move. That's, that's what they're hoping anyways. Um... Okay, now let's do this melee over here, which is a total mess. It's all simultaneous, so nobody's numbers change until we actually do it, but I'm going to start with the one closest to me. These guys are light horse, and they're coming in at a flank attack, so they're going to attack as medium horse. They're attacking light foot, basically, because goblins defend as light foot. So medium horse against light foot is two dice per man, four through six kills. So I'm going to roll 10 dice. Four through sixes are kills. Okay. That is one, two, three, four, five kills. Okay. Five kills against GB. One, who had four kills before. Do it that way. So now they're down. They're still above that 25% loss, or that 50% loss. Oh, no, hold on. They're 33%. They're would be if they lose nine, and that's exactly nine. So they're going to have to make a morale check. Simul Malay is simultaneous, so that's going to happen in a second. They fight back, of course. There's five of them. Well, actually, they lost an entire rank, so there's four of them fighting back. So heavy foot versus light horse is one die, so it's still the same because it's one die per two men. Sixes are kills. No kills. Okay, so let's remember that for a second. Before anything else happens, though, Let's do them against them, because that, that does matter as well. These guys are defending as armored foot. There's five heavy foot attacking them. 
Heavy foot versus armored foot. One die per two man, so same deal. Two dice. No kills, okay. But they're, they're able to fight back. There's five of them. They are five armored foot against heavy foot. One die per man, six kills. So five dice here. Any sixes or kills. I'm just figuring out all the numbers of losses here. These guys are probably one. Okay. So they're definitely below that number. So the first thing we need to do here is make a morale check for them to see if they flee the field because they've lost 33% of their people. They've got to score a seven or better on 2d6. Four. They fail. These guys retreat. They're off the board. Okay. Uh, it says if there's nowhere they can go, they'd be captured, blah, blah. But again, I'm, I'm not worrying about that. They run. The goblins let them go. They don't really care about that. That's cool. Here, though, still, we have another Malay. These guys are off the board. Who are the other guys that left? Five. Okay. Goblin two, who are still strong enough to do a full attack against them. Everybody here is exhausted at this point. Goblin two is attacking as... Light foot against armored foot. So it's one die per three men. So one die. No kills. These guys are the same. No kills. These guys are attacking as armored foot versus light foot with a plus one. So that is basically five dice. Because there's enough of them to do five dice, right? That's GA2. They haven't lost anybody yet. Five dice uh, with a plus one. So three, three sixes are kills against these guys first. Okay, nice. That's four kills against Goblin two, which is now nine again. So they're going to have to make a morale check. They got to roll seven or better on 2d6, or there's a gone. Okay, they make that. That's good. These guys, same thing. They get to roll five dice. Three through sixes are kills. Three more kills on them. Okay, so that's only a total of six, so they're still in the game. Now we have to do the post Malay morale. So, again, these guys against these guys lost four. So it's a D6 times four. So four times four is 24. Plus the difference in group size, which is now nine. And then plus their number, which is 120, no, 150 rather. These guys, uh, so they're... they're um, their number is, they get none of that benefit. There's only 14 of them times 5, which is 50, 70, 80, 90. So there's 90, that's a difference of 60. <laughs> 60, just retreat one move. Okay, so the retreat means with backs to the enemy. So one full move and turned backwards. They're not routed, but they're retreating. Okay. On this side, we've got a D6 times three, so 12, plus the difference, which is six, that's 18, plus 150, so that's one... 68, and their total number is 19 times 5, which is 95, so 168, 90, hold on, did I do that math right? These guys should have been, hold on, I think I did the math wrong on these guys. They are, yeah, I did the math wrong on these guys, hold on one second. So I shouldn't do the math in my head. 
they are basically 14, no, 16 times 5, 80. Oh, because I did that right. I just didn't subtract it. So these guys are, so the difference here should have been 103, not 80. So let's see if there's a difference. 100 uh, plus, surrender. Uh, they continue to charge of will proper ratio of prisoners, guards, one through five prisoners. Okay, so these guys are basically off the board. They're, they surrender, and because in the end these group, these goblins are trying to form a, a group together, they're basically, I'm just going to go like this, because these guys have to now be, well, we'll just do it this way. They're going to move, because that's, that's what we did. These guys, next turn, are going to lose five guys to be with them, because they have to, one, well, actually four guys. So let me do that. This is Goblin 2, A2. All right, so they're going to be down to 21 because they're going to send four guys off to go with these guys, the prisoners. On this side, so let's go back to this math again. <laughs> We've got a total of... They've lost six, so they've got 19 times five, which is 95. The victorious side has... 12 plus 6 plus 150 minus 95 is a 73 difference. Retreat one move. Oh boy, okay. I ran out of space on the recorder. Sorry about that. I will try to explain what happened. Not much, thankfully. I noticed it right away. So these guys had to retreat back and they hit the water. And retreat means you're back to the enemy, right? So we don't want that. So next turn, the footman actually won initiative. They turned around. These group, this, these two both went in and attacked the horseman that's here. These guys moved up to try to get around to the back of the horseman. These guys sat where they were so they could relax and not be uh, exhausted anymore. These guys kind of moved up and over here because they're going to go after the leader. So what we're looking at now is a melee about to happen. That's basically where we're at. So we've got a couple of melee actions here. I'll do these guys first because they're, well, it doesn't really matter. I'll do this one first. GA, they've lost nobody. They're light horse and light horse against a light foot because that's how the, the goblins defend. Two dice per man, five or six kills. So they're rolling 10 dice, fives and sixes are kills. Okay. One, two, three, four. Four kills. Okay. Four kills against J7. That's not enough to cause a morale check. So it's all good. I'm just going to do one of these at a time. Now, these guys are heavy foot attacking light horse. Heavy foot against light horse is one die per two men. Again, the ranks are five, so two people can attack. Sixes are killed. Wow. They killed two horses. Very nice for them. So GA1 has lost two. GA7 has lost four. Neither one has to do an immediate morale check for that. So let's just do the post Malay morale thing. If these, these guys have to run or something, we'll, we'll figure that out. So over here, GA7, again, started off with 24. Now they're down to 21 because they lost four. So the horsemen did more damage. So they're going to roll D6, which is six, times the difference, which is two. So 12. And then you're going to look at the total number of troops. They now have 23. They now have 21. So we'll add another two to their side. And then we're going to go six times the number of people they have in their group. So 23 times 6 is 146, giving them a total of 160. The goblins have lost forces, 21 of them, so they are just strictly 21 times 5, which is 110, giving us a difference of 50. If we look at the morale, I think the difference of 50 is going to make a difference. 40 to 50, back one move in good order. Okay, so they're going to have to back up one full move in good order, which is basically going to put them right at the foot of this hill. 
Now, let's do this side. They're attacking from a flank, so they attack as one level higher. So they're actually attacking as armored foot, which is very good for them. Armored foot versus light horses, one die per man, six kills. This is group eight. So they, they are reduced by two ranks, but their front rank is still strong. So they'll still get to roll five dice. I think it's the most dice the goblins on foot have ever rolled against the horses. They're going to get to roll five dice because they're flanking. Sixes are kills. They got one kill. Okay. Coming back at them, they don't defend any differently, so they're still light, uh, light foot. And th so it's the same deal back here. There's, their group is still strong enough. They haven't lost a full rank, so they're going to roll 10 dice. Fives and sixes are kills. One, two. That's not very good. They deliver two kills to this group, which is uh, Goblin B8, which now actually drops them, which I should have done this before, actually, and I don't think I did. They should have made a morale check, but I didn't, so I didn't do it, so it is what it is. So they have lost two. Actually, they might have to make another one. They? They'll have to make it when they lose 16, and they are, no, they need to leave four more. Okay, so they are actually down now to, okay, good. I'm doing my math in my head, but I should just do it on a piece of paper. So, again, for this combat, these guys did two. These guys did one. So the horsemen have the advantage. They're going to roll 1d6 times that number, so two is what they get. They caused one more casualty, so they'll get one there. So they're two plus one, which is three. Plus, now they're down to 22. 22 times 6 is 132, so that would give them 135 total. These guys on the other end, they've only got, they've lost 12. So there's only 13 of them. 13 times 5 is 50, 65. Ooh, that's not very good for them. That's a, that's a difference of 70. So again, retreat means that they got to move back and they uh, back to the enemy. So their back is to the enemy, which is a bummer because it takes a full move to turn around. They're three, okay, yeah, so they're, these guys are here. These guys are also at three, right? Okay, yep. Well, they're going to come down to a, a bunch of people being exhausted again, I think. These guys are now off the board. They were exhausted and they got, uh, they surrendered. Okay, that's the end of that turn. We're still recording, which is good. <laughs> All right, let's see who wins initiative. Again, white die is uh, wolves. Okay, the uh, the footmen win. Well, if they won initiative, they're definitely going to do... Can they do that? They can't. If they make an oblique turn... They can just get to this guy. Okay, so. All right. But they don't really have enough movement to, like, they're literally going to run right into his corner. So, yeah. Yeah. Like, they're going to run. Actually, I'll measure it from the, the middle of the, the two of them because they're a group. So, if I measure it from the middle, they actually can't. He's going to, like, barely not reach him. Of course, they would. So, they're going to just get right up to him, hoping that he's going to. Well, he's definitely going to move because clearly his back's to them. So they can't quite get there. That's how we're going to rule it. They, they, they moved. They made their choice. This guy's going to turn around because he wants to do the same thing. He's going to try to try to get back into the, the, the scrap. Okay. He obviously doesn't want to get charged. These guys, of course, are going to do exactly what the smart person would do, which is they're going to move right back into him. I think, oh, they fought a Malay, too, so they're actually exhausted. Ooh, is that smart? It's only smart because it will hold them in place. You know what? I'm going to roll a uh, black, if white die is high. They're going to do it. Okay, yeah. 
they move up into this Malay. These guys also fought in Malay, so they should, I already gave them a tag for that. They come into the Malay, but they are now going to be exhausted. They get exhausted from the move, not from the Malay. So they're going to be exhausted when they come into the Malay, I think, is how, you, how I would run that. Okay. The These guys can actually come up and engage the... He probably should have turned last turn. I don't know why he didn't. They've got enough movement to do it. They're going to come up and engage. Actually, can, can they get behind him? Yeah, I mean, that's just the tiniest little bit of a turn. But even if they did that, can they turn again? Probably not, because they have 12 movement. And to get behind them, they'll need six. Well, you know what they can do, actually? <laughs> they can cheat it a little bit. If they go like this, they make an oblique movement. Bloop. That moves, uses a quarter of their turn, their, their movement. Then they move forward four. And they make another oblique. Then they can move forward four more and just go right into the... Well, they can move three more, but... That's going to be enough to hit them in the rear. These guys, 10, so they can do it as well. They're going to charge forward. That goblin guy really should have moved. That was bad move on my part. Oh, this guy stayed put so they could relax, because at this point, they couldn't have done anything. They couldn't reach the other guy, I don't think. All right. Actually, is that true? Could they? You know what? They probably could have reached this guy, so I'm going to say they would have done that. So they're actually going to flank this guy and, and, and hit him. Now we get two full groups that are full power. These guys only have one round here. They're going to be exhausted after this first round of melee, so they got to hope it goes well for them. All right. This is what we got. Thankfully, that didn't happen. I'll do this one first. Because this one's going to end the game if it... Well, I'll do this one first because it'll end the game if they if they beat them. All right, because I believe, looking at this, rear attack. Units which attack from the rear deliver casualties without receiving any in return. Okay. Such troop will choose the bonus stated above for flank attack. Okay, so they, go, they fight one level higher. So they're going to actually attack as a medium horse against light foot. So two dice per man. Four through six kills. And the Goblin King's not going to be able to return the attack this round. They'll have to turn around next round. And, yeah, you know what? Even if they had turned the other way, I think I may not have played him as well. I think I don't move my Goblin Kings fast enough. You'll have to give me some advice in the comments. All right, so it's four through six. That's still not that good of a roll, though. That's only three casualties. But they have a small group. So three casualties against them. They can't return blows. It's not enough to cause a immediate morale check, so we'll leave it there. Actually, let me just play this whole thing out, because if he runs off the board, then it's going to end this combat. So post Malay morale. This group here, three, has a total of, oh, no, it's going to be close. I'll do it at the end. Let's do this first. These guys are fighting. They're exhausted, so they defend as one lower, but they're already at light foot, so I'm going to give these guys the benefit of plus one to their die roll. And again, light horse. You think I've memorized by now. Against light foot is two dice per man, five or six. So this is going to be two dice per man, four through six. Kill. But they really did this to hold them in place, because if they win this melee, then these guys are going to get hit by the rear next. Okay, so four through six. Wow, they did not that great there. Okay, they caused three casualties. They also attack as one less, though. So they are light foot attacking against light horse. Uh, one die per two minutes. So actually, it's not that bad. So they get to roll two dice. No kills. Okay, so this is seven. They lose two more. They haven't gone below that number where they have to make a morale check. We'll do the post Malay morale in a second. So they lost two. Okay, over here, nobody's exhausted. 
but they're attacking from the flank, which means they're attacking his armored foot against light horse. Armored foot versus light horse is one die per man, six hits. That group has enough to be a full force, so they're going to roll five dice. Any sixes or kills, they got one. That's against these guys, two. Now, they hadn't lost anybody, technically, but they lost four people because they had to take the surrendering guys off, so that's actually not great for them because now they're down to 20, which makes them almost the same, except they get to fight back. Uh, they will fight. These guys defend as one higher because they're flanking. So light as... No, no, that's only with the... Uh, the only attack is one higher with the flank. I think I may have done that wrong over there too, but that's okay. You don't defend as one. Oh, no, actually it says next higher... Well, it says flank attack. So I guess they're the next higher class. So they defend as heavy foot. So light horse against heavy foot. is two dice per man, six kills. So it's the same amount of dice, it's just that only six is kill now. Ooh, and they only get one kill. That is not good for them. Because they got two against them. So now, let's do the post melee morale. Probably should have been more specific. <laughs> let's see if I can remember what happened. These guys attacked, they did not, they took damage, right? Three, they couldn't return any blows. So we're going to do a D6 times three, 18. Then we're going to look at the difference in the force size. So these guys are, these guys are 18. These guys are 12. So there's a difference of six. And then we're going to multiply 18, which is what they are, by 6. That'll be their base number. The 6 is because they're light horses. So 108. That giving them a total of 132. The Goblin King, all they have going for them is there's 12 of them times 5, which is 60. There's a difference there of 72. And because both sides are less than 20, we double that. So the difference is 144, which equals surrender. So the Goblin King surrenders. And that is the end of this combat. Whatever happens over here doesn't actually matter. Now, if people retreat back or they do whatever, it doesn't matter because the king is dead. Long live the king, as they say. So I'm going to tally up how many people will died, how many people are left. And that will be my goblin force that is going to possibly go after the, the black hounds. But what I will do is say this. This took a little while to set up, right? So I'm going to say this took 1d6 days. Because that's what I did with them. It takes 1d6 days after a combat to get your kind of stuff back together. So when did this actually take place? 1d6 after the initial encounter. Five days. So this actually took place... this will matter, potentially. Five days is so what took place on June the 6th. Goblin versus Goblin. And then it's going to take them a D6 days to get their stuff together. And if the hounds can move faster, they might be able to get away. Because the hounds are actually going to be on the move, actually, the next day. So... This is six days. Okay, so unless they roll, I'll do it right now. One. Wow. Okay. They are basically going to be recovered on the same day that the Black Hounds move. Because seven days. Wow. Okay. That's going to be really interesting, guys. That means that this group's going to be able to come in on the Black Hounds and make another attack against them basically on June the 7th. And we'll make that work. Obviously, they're a weakened force now, but now I have these wolves, so they're going to be a little bit tougher than they were before because adding that light horse element really makes a difference. Thanks so much for watching. If you've been enjoying this video series, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel for more like that. You can leave a comment below with your comments. 
You can also check the description. You'll find a link to all the different stuff I use for this game and a link to my Discord server where you can join the conversation. You'll also find a link down there for my Patreon if you want to support the channel. I'll talk to you soon.